The story of Yasuke is one of history's most interesting situations. However, there are some parts of the story that people don't really know today. For example, how long was Yasuke even in Japan? Well, if you look at the historical evidence, it turns out Yasuke's entire Japan excursion only occurred over the course of four years. And all the things known about his legend, him becoming a samurai, winning wars beside Oda Nobunaga and the eventual downfall, all happened within that final year. Another interesting thing about the story of Yasuke is the actual reaction of Japan towards his presence. What most people would expect is something along the lines of people being xenophobic or terrified of a big black man that appeared into their country. But the opposite actually happened. Most of the people in Japan were just innocently curious and wanted to see the man. And one of the best examples of this innocent curiosity is Yasuke's first meeting with Oda Nobunaga. So the man who would eventually be called Yasuke in history was originally a servant for a Jesuit missionary named Alessandro Valignano. We don't know for sure what Yasuke's relationship with this missionary was. All we really know is that Yasuke could speak a bit of Japanese before he entered Japan. Perhaps he also wanted to participate in the missionary work or he was simply forced to do it. One way or another, he did eventually end up on Japan and from this point on, we have plenty of historical records of what happened. Partially because once he set foot in Japan, everyone was talking about him. He was literally the first black man these Japanese people had ever seen. It got to the point where even the shogun, Oda Nobunaga, one of the most famous Japanese historical figures, heard his name. So he eventually invited Yasuke to his palace. From the moment he saw him, he was wondering why this man's skin was so dark. So he asked his servants to start washing his skin. And when he eventually noticed the skin wasn't getting any lighter, he asked the man to strip down to see his whole body and then he realized oh wait this guy's completely black that makes no sense and his reaction to that realization was pure fascination now some people wonder why the initial reaction to all these japanese people was fascination rather than the typical xenophobia you would expect one theory people have stated that could explain this is that yasuke's skin resembled a whole lot of statues of buddha so the assumption is that when people saw dark skin for the first time they thought it was something divine it kind of reminds me of how colonizers were originally responded to when they entered countries being treated like they were some sort of divine being because of their light skin and blue eyes. Anyway, this is how Yasuke eventually befriended Oda Nobunaga. Within just a few months, he was trained with the sword, his physical strength already being honed from his life in Africa. He even participated in a bunch of Oda Nobunaga's legendary battles, making his legend spread far and wide around Japan. There are even some historical paintings that are predicted to have been around the time when Yasuke was alive, where there are two sumo wrestlers, and one of them just so happens to be black. This paired with the statements at the time that Yasuke had the strength of for men genuinely makes me wonder whether he participated in sumo wrestling. Might I remind you, all of this happened within just a few short months since his entire stint of being a samurai only occurred within a year. And the reason why this stint was only a year was because of the eventual betrayal of Oda Nobunaga by Akechi Mitsuhide, one of Oda's generals, who gathered an army to attack him when he was vulnerable. This legendary betrayal, now called the Honnoji Incident, has been exhaustively documented throughout history. Mitsuhide ambushed Oda with with his army and set the temple on fire while he was still inside, only having a few guards including his friend Yasuke around to protect him. We don't really know why Mitsuhide decided to betray Oda Nobunaga at this time. The logical explanation was he just wanted power. I mean the dude could have just waited for Oda to take over all of Japan and then he would have ended up incredibly rich and powerful himself. But nah, he just had to be number one so Japan would still be in war for hundreds of more years. Once Oda Nobunaga realized his fate, he decided to give up. Harakiri. A Japanese ritual action of self-disembowelment, done in samurai culture, as the proper completion to the death penalty. But this time, Oda had done it to admit defeat. In the tradition, there is a second man that will slice off the head to stop the samurai from suffering a painful end. Oda Nobunaga asked Yasuke to be this second man and to take his head before escaping, robbing Akechi Mitsuhide from knowing if he truly died, placing a curse on the man who betrayed him. Yasuke complied and escaped the burning palace into the darkness. After Yasuke eventually succeeded in his escape, he wanted to start a rebellion with Oda Nobunaga's son, but the lack of manpower and the understandably hectic time that was happening right after the death of a shogun meant he would eventually fail. Mitsuhide eventually trialed Yasuke to decide what he was going to do with him, and his decision was to spare Yasuke, but not out of kindness. This is what he said, A black slave is an animal and knows nothing, nor is he Japanese so do not kill him, and place him in the custody at the Cathedral of Padra in India. Yeah, seems like it didn't take that long for racism to seep back into the story. 
And unfortunately, that is the end of Yasuke's story in history. We don't know what happened to him after he got sent to India. For all we know, his ship could have sunk on the way there. But just because the story ends on a bad note doesn't necessarily mean that the Yasuke story isn't great. Because if we look into modern day Japan, Yasuke's story is still well known among the people. He's, dare I say, become his own influential part of culture. Not bad for a guy who was just a slave a few years prior. His story has been adapted into children's books, into movie scripts, into anime, and more. Turns out Mitsuhide ended up on the wrong side of history with his take, calling Yasuke an animal. Overall, what Yasuke's story can tell us is that even if you look incredibly different or come from completely different cultures, just being open-minded and innocently curious can do so much. It might even make you befriend the most powerful man in the country. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I know this is all cringe and this is where you click off, but let me say one last thing. Thanks for listening to this story. Okay, bye.